going on. I am out for a little solo fish here. Um, I'm hiking for a little while. I got about a two, two and a half kilometer hike to the zone that I'm gonna fish. And I'm hoping the water is not too high because if it's too high, <laughs> I won't be able to fish it or cross to get to the spot I wanna be in. So I got the life jacket on because I'm gonna be crossing some water and uh, see how it goes. Hopefully I don't run into any bears in the forest here. Um, they all like hanging out in kind of this forest. So good thing I talked to the camera, but we'll, uh, we'll go for a little walk here. There we go. First of the day, a little Jackie Chan. How big is this guy? He's pretty tiny. Ah, oh, that ain't so bad. It's like a medium sized. That's a dinner right there. It's a small dinner. I'll take him. Beggars can't be choosers these days. There's another one. Right on, it's Jack City right now. All right, we'll let him go. Oh, he just swallowed that hook. It's big for the little guy. Another Jack. <laughs> oh my God, it's nonstop Jack action. Where are, you, where are you going, buddy? Where are the big ones? All hatcheries, these little guys, always. Oh, yep, yeah, that's a hatchery too. They just lodge themselves. It's barbless, but they lodge themselves. Later, buddy. That's gotta be, that's got a bit more weight to it. It's probably another like medium sized hatchery. Woohoo! Uh, that's not a bad, that one's a bit better eating size. Oh, it looks like he's got a little, look how beautiful. Even these small ones, man, they're so beautiful. Another hatchery. It's a lot of hatchery jack cohos. Later, buddy. Finally, that bead got taken off. It took a while. There we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's barrel rolling. Hey, thanks, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Oh, beautiful wild. Nice size, too. Whoa. Uh oh, that is a huge coho. Tough water to play a fish today. Really tough water. Is that a chum? It's fighting like a chum. Oh yeah, that's a chum. Ooh, dirty little chum. Get him out of the rapids. Oh no. Chums are bulldogs. They fight so hard. There we go. Awesome. Oh, wait a second. That's just a colored coho. That ain't a chum. What am I talking about? Wow. Gobbled it right up. Look at that thing. Nice. Wow. It's got a bit of a red shine to it. That's a wild. We'll let her go. See if we can get another one. Look at this. So this is actually kind of interesting. In his mouth, so in his stomach and his mouth where he's eating, you can see these eggs, right? So see how tiny this egg is? I don't know if there's any more in there. See that right in his head? See this egg? 
So he's actually feeding on these eggs. And that's why beads work so well, because they're basically mocking or mimicking that small, small egg. So I was using a pretty big egg, but you can even use something like an eight millimeter, even smaller than that, because that's what these things are feeding on. And the more natural you can make it look, the more likely you are to, uh, to catch a fish, basically. So it was definitely worth the hike in. And I got a bunch of jacks. I think I had like probably nine jack coho, um, all around the same size or smaller than this one. I've kept one right here, uh, the one you saw me keep. I've got him gutted. I've got him cleaned up, and uh, and I think I'm gonna cook him uh, over a fire. So if the rain holds off here, I'm gonna throw him into some tin foil. I haven't eaten lunch yet today. Um, just was coming out quick, but I think it'd be fun to just make a quick fire and uh, and and fry him up. Just cause I need a bit of lunch. All right, see you there. So we're back, I'm back in the truck now. When I was leaving the river carrying that fish, a DFO officer walked up to me uh, and he had, was just parking his truck. And uh, we started chatting and he saw my fish. And I learned something today, apparently when you keep a jack coho, so when you keep a small coho in BC, it's gotta be over 30 centimeters. So mine was about 31 centimeters. So I was really, uh, really cutting it close there, but I didn't actually know that. Um, I knew there's a size limit on, uh, on springs but uh, to be an adult and a jack, but I didn't know uh, that about Koho. So I learned that today and he was super cool. I think his name was Sergeant Gravel and uh, he was laughing and telling me that uh, checking on fishermen is his break for the day because um, I, you know, he's usually out dealing with hunters. So fortunately I actually have a bundle of firewood uh, from the summer in the back of the truck and I got the ax. So we're gonna take this little jack, we're gonna go to uh, to a little river bank here and uh, I might bring the fishing gear, I might not, I haven't decided. Um, well, I'll probably bring the fishing gear if I'm going down to the river bank and we'll try and get a fire started and cook this fish over the fire before the rain starts. And it looks like the rain is just about to start. So my timing, um, I might just be a little, little late to, uh, to miss the storm, but we'll see how it goes. Some of the small pieces of kindling first. Perfect. So the fire's getting going here, and the rain is cooperating for us. All right, so I'm gonna get the fish prepped. I'm gonna put the fish into some tin foil. I got some salt, and I got some pepper with me, and I got a big thing of tin foil. So what we're gonna do is it's gonna be real simple, a real classic here. I'm just gonna get a big thing of tin foil like this, and we're gonna grab that fish that we caught. I did drop him in the mud when I saw the uh, the CO there. He looks pretty clean to me. I put him in there. He's open. I'm gonna just do a bunch of salt on his insides. Am I getting it in there? Oh yeah, there we go. And a bit of pepper. So basically, what we want to do is we want to create a little oven for the fish here, so it'll be nice and hot inside this tin foil and you also don't want the tin foil to completely burn either because tin foil can set on fire and we need to get it close to the flame here and we'll get it cooking so we're gonna gonna make sure that heat's gonna be able to get into that tin foil and cook this fish right up for us so there we go there's our little there's our little tin foil thing of fish there it is yeah 
we're gonna pop this onto near the fire. I'm gonna make the fire bigger, but you know, we may as well start getting it a little warm um, as we get this fire going even more here. Beautiful. It's getting hot, it's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in the kitchen, baby. There's that fish starting to cook in the fire. Tin foil is gonna be getting hot soon. Just a beautiful spot to be. So those coals are really, really hot now. So what I'm doing is I've got the, uh, I've got the tin foil and the fish right on those coals. And tin foil does a pretty good job at not setting on fire. It'll burn the outside. I might even char the outside of the fish, but that's okay because I'm only eating what's on the inside. And I just need it to get hot enough that it cooks. And that's it. So we're getting there, we're getting closer. So it's been on these coals for some time. Um, I think I'm gonna check now and see if it's ready. This tin foil is so hot, so I gotta be careful here when I open it up. I mean, that tin foil is definitely hot. Hot enough so it cooked it? I don't know, we're gonna find out here. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. That's cooked, so we're gonna enjoy this now. So we're gonna open up our little thing of tin foil here. Look at that, the skin's just falling right off when I peel it open. That's gonna be easy. Oh yeah, that's cooked. Look at that. Oh yeah. Wow, hell yeah, that's cooked. Mmm, man. Delicious. Just delightful. See how it tastes? Oh yeah. So, so delicious. Right off. This is how these jacks should be eaten. The greatest part too is the bones. If you can see here, they just stay in the ribs, so you just pull it off with your fingers. And the bones stay right attached to the rib. Super easy to eat. This is the best bushcraft meal you could ever have. I'm tasting the salt in there. I'm tasting the pepper in there. Man, that's good. And then and the fats and the juices from the coho. So delicious. God, I'm just gonna mutilate this thing. It's not the cleanest way of doing it. It's a bit barbaric. I hadn't even eaten lunch. Look at that, look at it just fall off the skin. That's the skin right there. It's just falling right off the skin like this. Man, it's a beautiful thing. The meat just pulls right off the spine, so you don't gotta worry about any bones. You got the whole backbone there. You don't have to fillet it. No concerns, that's the easiest way to cook a fish. So I think that's all I'm gonna eat. That was freaking delicious. I accidentally got some sand in it, but we'll give the uh, we'll give the le the rest of the birds here. I'm sure they'll come get it. So here you go, birds. Oh, we don't want the tinfoil going in the water. Just the bones and stuff that the birds will eat. And the skin. All right, that's good. I'll throw the rest of my own garbage here. I think the seagull's already coming for it. Fire's starting to die down here, and that was a. Uh, Freaking delicious coho meal on the water. You can't really beat that, cooking something over the fire. It's as tasty as it gets, and I even brought the salt and pepper, which made it even better. Those small ones are perfect eating. When you get a small one, put them on the grill, put them on the uh, pan, put them on a fire, they're awesome. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you've ever cooked a fish over a fire. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty fun and it's, it's super tasty, super wholesome thing to do. Um, I think I'm gonna get back out there, do a couple more casts uh, before the, uh, the river gets too high with, with all the rain that's about to fall. And uh, that's it, I, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you, you enjoyed uh, watching the antics of making a fire. Oh, by the way, when I was driving here, I had left my phone on the hood of my truck and it flew off on the highway. And I ran out, I parked and ran kind of out to the highway and it was on the shoulder and my phone was actually still working. It's completely destroyed. So, um, gonna need a new phone. 
But uh, believe it or not, you know, YouTube uh, doesn't pay the bills, but maybe, maybe one day it will. Uh, and then I'll get a phone. So I might be running without a phone for a while. Not that it affects any of you. Um, it's harder for my, uh, my friends and whatnot to, to contact me. Hey, thanks for coming along. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, yeah, let me know if there's, uh, if there's any other ways I should be cooking a fish. Um, that'd be fun. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go link into another couple, be uh, before the before nightfall here. So I'll see you guys next time.